Hey guys, Matt with Bleepin' Jeep here. Today we're going to show you how to redeck a trailer. I've got some helpful tips and tricks for you to make this quick and simple. Let's get started. The first thing that you're going to need to get is the wood. So this is my trailer. It is a PJ buggy hauler trailer. It's 20 feet long. Two of that is a dovetail. So I've got 18 feet here and two foot here. Now the wood for a trailer this long is hard to find so you're going to have to special order anything that is over 16 feet so a lot of people don't know this but you can special order lumber from home depot and lowe's or your local lumber yard it takes a little bit longer to get in so just factor that in in this case what i did was bought 20 foot so we're going to have to cut that at 18 so we should have 18 here and two foot here and not have any waste the next thing that you need is your tools an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel a skill saw a speed square a jigsaw self-drilling screws wood to metal we're going to use two and three quarter inches i think i got those at home depot tape measure big hammer of some sort a drill driver and we might need a few more things coming up if we do i'll show you what those are so before you go removing all of the wood on your trailer make sure to use your trailer to get the wood and now i'm going to pull this wood off and we'll get started removing the old deck boards what we've got here is two by eight boards and then we have one smaller one in the middle there the first thing that we need to do on this particular trailer is to remove this piece where the dovetail is it's actually welded in We'll need to weld that back when I'm done. If your trailer is like this and you can't weld, don't worry about that. You can uh, just take it to a welder afterwards, but we're gonna cut right here and right here. All right, I got the ends cut. That's actually welded throughout the middle as well, but I'm gonna wait for a minute to get to that. So the next step, you might think that you need to find all the little screw heads and screw those out. But if your wood is rotted, so are the screws. They're not coming out. So that is not the way to do this. The first thing that you need to do is figure out where all your cross beams are. And luckily we can see those pretty well from here. First, make sure that you don't have any electrical wires running on the wood. Um, sometimes people will redo the trailer and they'll screw those up to the wood. I'm sure some manufacturers do that. In this case, all my electrical is inside the metal of the trailer, so I don't have to worry about any electrical lines or brake lines running under the wood. So we're good to cut there. So the next step that we're going to do is take a saw and we're going to cut every single piece of wood in between these metal beams. Right here, we're gonna make a cut all the way across. Right here, we're gonna make a cut all the way across. And we're just gonna go along the whole trailer and just make cuts all the way across. And that's gonna help us get these boards out quick and easy. After a few minutes, you're going to end up with a trailer that looks like this. I actually changed strategy because of the way my trailer was built up here, and you'll see why in a minute. But the next thing that we need to do is finish these cuts on the end. So the circular saw couldn't come all the way to the end of the trailer because it would hit the metal. So to finish these cuts, you can use a jigsaw or a reciprocating saw saw or whatever you like, but we need to finish those cuts out. <laughs> Now what you have left is the tiny bits of board with the screws holding them to the beams. Now the goal here is to break these off and break the screws right off of the beams. You don't want them left over. So we're going to do our best to just snap those right off. And if you can get them to snap, perfect. Less work to do later. Now you might can guess why I changed up my game plan on this side of the trailer. I noticed that the boards weren't screwed to every beam, just every other beam. So I started skipping them so that I would have more leverage. So now, instead of having a short piece of board, I've got a long piece of board with the screw on this end. And I've got a lot more leverage to be able to just snap them. All right, guys, this is what you should be left with. 
So with filming and everything, it took me about an hour to do this. So if you really get after it, this can be done fairly quickly. And it really depends too on how rotted your boards are. The more rotted they are, the easier they're gonna come out. So we're gonna clean this up. It's at this point, if you have any issues with rust or you need to paint, or if you have any electrical issues that you need to take care of, do all that now, because it's so much easier without the boards in place. So, after you take care of any issues that you need to, we're gonna go to the next step. Okay, next step. A lot of these screw heads broke off pretty flush, but if they didn't, what we're gonna do is go ahead and cut those off flush with the beam. So I'm just gonna continue doing that, cutting off each screw along the entire trailer. Okay, all the screw heads are gone. The next thing I'm looking at, I'm gonna mark the trailer. So if you'll notice, here on this beam, they put two screws per piece of wood. So I'm gonna mark that with two X's. This one, you'll notice there's no screws. This one, you'll notice there's one screw per piece of wood. So I'm gonna put one X. And the reason I'm doing that is since they didn't use this beam, I'll be able to put screws all along here without running into these. Now if I were to try to put screws into this beam, I could do that, but if I were to run into that screw, it would not go through. It would create a big problem and I'd have to drill multiple holes in that piece of wood. So what I'm going to try to do is put the screws in the beams that don't have any screws already in them. And if I have to, like on the one on the end, I'm just going to have to try to miss the screws that are already in the beams. And I can mark those too. And there's one there, there's one there, there's one there, and so on and so forth. That way I don't mess up and try to put two screws into one hole, if that makes sense. I'm also going to mark wherever there is an open beam just with a straight line, because that way, when I've got the boards on here, I won't be able to see where the beams are, but I'll be able to see these lines on the edges of the trailer. So I'm just gonna mark lines like so to be able to line up the screws. So these places where I put X's, you might still have to go through some of these beams, but at least you'll know that you're gonna be dealing with an issue there. And I'm gonna come down here at the end and mark this side as well. So I know, okay, don't put a screw there. And it's pretty much the same over here. I can actually mark this side as well. So don't just depend on 18 foot and two foot. I'm actually gonna put the board up here and we want this board to be under this piece of metal. So I'm thinking right about here and then cut all the rest of my boards to that length. So in my case, that measurement is just shy of 18 feet. It looks like we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 boards. Uh, minus the middle one because that's going to be thinner. So we're going to start on the edges Five here five here. So I need to cut ten boards Something important to think about when you're doing wood projects is your crown So if you look at this piece of wood, this is your crown So you want this just like it is you don't want it the other direction for one It's going to be stronger this direction and two if that warps It's going to bow this way and you want it to bow this way and not this way, otherwise you'll end up just collecting water in there and it's gonna be all funky. So, always put your crown down like this. You can see that's crown down like that. This one is wrong, so I need to flip this one and this one's good. All right, we've got most of our main deck laid out there. We're gonna try to push them tight against the edges and all the way towards the front. I've been using a piece of wood to hit them forward. I've been using a piece of wood to hit them to either side. So I've got some extra pieces of this uh, two by six that's gonna go in the middle here. And since it's the exact width that I need, I cut little wedges and I'm gonna push that in here and make sure that the whole thing all the way down is the right width before we screw any of the other boards in. Okay, I've got the wedges in there all the way down the center. Judging by how tight some of these were, you can see how tight that is. 
we're probably going to have to shave a little bit off of that last board before we can stick that in. But at least we know that and I can get to screwing these down. Okay, so these screws that we're using, they have a bit that comes with it. So make sure to use that bit. I've drawn a line across the board where the screws are going to go. Right here you can see this is where no screws have been. I'm going to go ahead and put two on this row. We'll probably do one for each board all the way down and then two at the very other end. All right, this is where you should ask for assistance from your very best neighbor or friends to come and have a screw party. <laughs> that sounds wrong, but what I'm gonna do is put screws about every other beam. So uh, there, there, and then I might skip, do every third beam somewhere in here. And then I'm gonna make sure though that the ends are secure and that there's plenty of screws in there. You can see whenever they did this here, they did every other beam there and then they skipped two and did one there. I'll probably do something similar as I'm putting these in. That's gonna take a minute, so let's do it. Okay, we've got our screws in. Now we need to get this center board in and we know it's a little tight. You can see right there that it's squishing pretty hard. So what we're gonna do is just measure this Looks like it's at five inches at the front. Oh man, it's five and a half inches up here. I'm gonna measure all these gaps. We'll put a board up here and we'll mark it and then we'll just kind of fit it in that gap. Any sane person would probably just rip this down to five inches, throw it in, have some gaps and call it good, but I'm not sane, so. <laughs> Fingers crossed that this is gonna fall right into place. What do you bet? Odds are unlikely. Well, let's find out. Oh man, that's hard work. All right guys, I got the main deck finished. There needs to be a few more screws in a couple spots, but before it gets dark, I wanna to try to get this dovetail. Now this is probably going to be the hardest part. I got to get this bent back up and over and then slide the dovetail sections down through because I can't angle them in. Looks like it's going to be about 24 inches. I'm going to cut that from the leftovers of the 20 foot section. Okay the trick here is going to be sliding these in And then I'll just slide them across to the other side. All right, check it out. It's complete. Well, minus a couple of things. So I need to get that welded right there. But my welder is trapped because we're doing some painting inside the shop. So we'll do that later on. If you don't have a welder, I would suggest going uh, to a welding shop. They'll probably charge you 20 bucks or to a friend that's got a welder. Um, if you have a dovetail, that is. If you don't have a dovetail, you probably don't need to worry about that. Every trailer, though, is going to be a little bit different, so just use your brain and figure out kind of how it works. Um, each trailer is going to be different on the end on how these pieces lock in. Sometimes this will come off or unbolt so that you can get the pieces stuffed in there. Um, other than that, ceiling. So this is pressure-treated wood. You always want to use pressure-treated wood. You want to let it dry though for about six months before you try and seal it. You can seal that with Thompson's water seal or you can even use motor oil. You can use uh, diesel to seal these up. That is why they don't last long is because they don't get sealed very often and they sit outside of course. So I'm going to wait, let that dry out. It's really wet so if you try to put a seal on there it's not going to take because it's too wet right now. Other than that, what else can I tell you? So the wood for this 20-foot trailer was expensive. It was about 450 bucks, but considering a new trailer in this range is about six grand, well worth it. These screws right here, you'll probably need a box of those. I think they were like 30 or $35, something like that. One of the best tips I can give you though is don't rely on the screw to drill the hole. Even though it's got a bit on the end of it, use a real drill bit because those screws 
aren't the best quality. If you have somebody following you beforehand with this and then you come back with the screw, it's gonna be a much easier job all around. I started this project at about 1 o'clock in the afternoon and it is now 4.30, so I think if you have a level head and you use your brains and your wits, I think you could get this done in about 4 to 5 hours. It also requires two Dr. Peppers. Now, if you enjoyed this video, if you got some help out of it, please consider hitting the thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. We do Jeep and off-road related content once or twice a week. We also post our Patreon supporters right over there. Thank you guys. We appreciate you. We will see you in the next video. Dogs are barking. All right. Bye guys.